Okay, so we've made it to Sunday at 2 o'clock. Uh, today we are continuing in the Hollywood Hair Series, and our uh, inspiration today will be uh, Catherine Grayson, and she has very short hair and a relatively simple set. I've chosen to show this as a wet set. Uh, but it can be translated into a heat set with a curling iron. Uh, if you see some of my previous uh, episodes in this series, you can see how to do the pin curls with, um, with a curling iron. But for today, we're doing a wet set. I'm going to... I had to... This one's a little bit hard to read, so I'm going to be... I wrote it down, and I'm going to read it off really quick. Uh, so you can kind of see here, uh, easier to wear than a poodle cut is Catherine Grayson's short fluffy bob. The curl that dips in the middle of her forehead accentuates the heart shape of her face. Her hair is thick, slightly wavy, and medium texture. You can see that. The hair is parted on the left. Around the face, it is about three and a half inches long, tapered to about one and a quarter inches in length at the neckline. Catherine's hair is tapered, being it is thick. Thin hair should be semi-blunt cut for a thicker appearance for this coiffure. And then we're going to show the uh, the set, which is here. From the crown to the forehead, the hair on top of the head is set in four rows of three stand-up curls. So that's this right here, and it will be right here. Uh, from there... Below the part on the left side of the head are three rows of two stand-up curls. So that's these here, or on the side here. The rest of the head is set irregularly all over the head in pin curls. So just pin curls everywhere. They don't really show the back, but it's not that necessary. Uh, this coiffure brushes out into soft waves that form semi-curls. Uh, given the length of the haircut tells us the... Um, the fact that the curls are going to be a little more wavy semi-curls rather than full curls. Oh, push buttons. Somebody. Sorry, somebody decided to call me right in the middle of this thing. Don't know who it was. So, for this, my lovely doll is, this is, she is well survived beyond her usefulness. Um, her hair is literally falling out. So this may be her last set ever. Um, but because we're doing pin curl or stand-up curls, this is where I'm going to actually put in rollers. And while it says four rows of three curls each, I'm going to be doing two, um, two larger rollers um, to mimic what the stand-up curls would look like. So, and it's parted on the left, and I'm going to start just right here. Let's see if I can wish me luck. I'm trying to show. I'm going to do what I've done before, which is to do a zigzag part. The width of a, uh, the length, the section is part of the, the length of the roller, where looking for on base curls and for this one I'm going to use um, a yellow medium maybe about a half inch roller and bring it up and go ahead and secure with a single prong clip and before I get too carried away I nearly forgot uh, her hair was washed and then prepped with some Indian amla oil for strength and shine. And then for hold, I've chosen to use the Style Link Super Fixer. Um, and that's really all that we're doing here. So for this next curl, we're going to use a half size roller, same diameter, just half the size as far as length goes. Same diameter, just a little smaller. Wrapping around, smoothing the hair over the end of the roller, and then securing with a single prong clip. 
Now this same pattern can be achieved by using a curling iron. I'm going to then come in the back and start, because I want these to kind of bricklay. I really don't want to have anything that is um, obviously uh, falling apart. So we're going to bricklay just a little bit for this. So now I'm going to put the long one, the longer roller, to the back section and still using the zigzag parting uh, if your will start falling apart. Just tuck it in with the comb and secure. Same thing in the back. Tuck it in and secure. Now since this front one's going to be a little shorter, we're going to use the shorter roller. And still wanting the on base roll. We're going to go ahead and take this little guy and short roller. And we really do want to roll it on base so that it sits exactly on the hair that was parted. So let me just stick our clippy in and then once more for this last row. So what this what they were asking for in the diagram would be to have one, two, three, four and do that three times. But because I'm using the rollers, I don't have to work that way. So we're gonna do same idea here. This time with uh, the long roller in the front. And if you were doing this with a curling iron or hot rollers, curling iron is even easier because you can just work each section. I still recommend doing the zigzag parting so you don't end up with a strong line. Um, between your your sections your sections and your rollers and then we'll use a little short one back here so then we have the entirety of the top and it said front to the crown and that's why these are a little longer um sections as far as things go whereas when we get to the side it's going to only be the width of a roller and there's only going to be a couple put in. This is a really, really simple style. So if you were doing it with a curling iron, you would be uh, rolling these towards the right ear. And now this side, which like I said, is only the width of a roller um, as they ask to put only uh, three stand-up curls in the row and only two rows so we're just going to take the same size the yellow and try to hope that, that just stays attached that's what the uh, gel is especially good for is sticking the roller to the uh, to the hair hair to the roller and then we're just going to do one more, still doing a zigzag parting so we don't have any strong, and there went some hair, so that's going to have to be redone. <sighs> Alright, I'll fix that in a second. Happens to the best of us. Last roller, so... If you're doing this with the curling iron, perhaps you're looking at uh, maybe you're only going to get five uh, stand-up curls. Um, anything, uh, you know, the two going on the left and then the um, three across the top. Let's see if I can just tuck this in and around. Let's find out. Okay, everybody in? I think I got it. Feel good about that back around and throw in one extra clip for fun. I'm so glad 
I really am. I like it. At least somebody's getting some enjoyment out of this. I mean, I'm enjoying myself, but it's nice to know that other people are too. So the rest is a really, really simple uh, collection of pin curls. And because it's meant for casual wear, there, I'm, and the hair is so short that I'm, I'm not going to actually use uh, pins proper. Uh, mostly, we're just going to have to gather and twist and hope for the best by uh, utilizing clips to hold the curls in place. Um, if you were using a curling iron, you might just put in a curl and and then just clip it as I've done in uh, previous um, styles and this is going to be um, it's a unique challenge for me because I don't often do pin curls on hair quite this short but I think it's important to at least try to uh, get the idea of what the style was. Uh, I've been doing a lot of these and just kind of faking it with length, so this is much, much closer to Catherine Grayson's um, described hair cut. So we're gonna just, I don't know why I turned that way. I'm gonna try and see, uh, see if I can do this. So we're gonna turn her sideways. Move that so we can watch a whole bunch of pin curls happen. Isn't it? This is so tricky. Uh, as best I can. And since they're just going to be forward, just going to kind of part out and start building forward as best I can. Um, all things considering, like I said, this hair is really, really short, it's really, really damaged, and I'm going to just do my best to make curls out of it. So it's, uh, it's quite a trick here. Do the best I can with what I got, which in this case is a whole lot of short hair. And it's not necessary that anything be exactly perfect. That's the nice thing about... Well, really, it's the nice thing about all of these styles that I've been doing in the series, is that they're not... I don't think a single one of them that we've done so far has been... I mean, aside from maybe, like, the, um, the stand-up curls, a lot of them, the pin curls, are literally just stick them in and make it work rather than oh well maybe they'll let's see i don't know maybe this this might end up being a whole other row so you're, you're watching the process as it happens here doing best i can to encourage these sections to wrap into themselves. Uh, this would probably be a little easier on a on a curling iron just because then you could grab a hold and it happen as you can see hair is going all over the place so I have to kind of grab and go. Uh, since this is meant to be a little haphazard just to create that bit of wave I'm not panicking, but it's certainly, um, this short of hair is a little more, uh, complicated to get these ends to stay where you want them. So, trying our best to pin them delicately. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing here that says it has to be anything perfect. If you were curling your hair with a curling iron, you just kind of put in a, a random assortment 
and just, you know, pin them if you wanted or because it's meant more for the wave rather than um, like a structure for um, a style. I think you can get away with a little bit more of like not being super precise in these because I'm not using it as a basis for uh, say um, a, a finger wave where you would want to have that S wave in there. Um, so it's uh, definitely a unique situation here that I don't often have to fight with, but I'm, I'm making it work as best I can. And I'm also kind of at an awkward angle of approach, too, since I'm still trying to show what it is that I am doing here. And there's nothing, I, it's still, I think, important to try and keep the hair as smooth as possible while you're doing it, but it's not vitally important to, um, to keep the sections um, clean, as it were. I don't have to part this out exactly, oh, there needs to be uh, seven pin curls in this section, or you know, eight to ten in this section, and they all have to be rolled exactly the same. I've chosen to roll all of these forward uh, due to the fact that uh, for most of the rest of the um, uh, the various directions throughout this particular uh, publication definitely says pin curls are rolled toward the face. So that's what I'm going to do. Even when we get to the back, I'm going to try my best to continue to roll toward the face, even at the expense of, well, that's some short hair, um, of figuring out, you know, because it, it says haphazard, but I think it does make it easier if you are kind of limiting your directions to all curls on this side are going to go this way, and then all the curls on the other side are going to go the other way. So you don't have to, you really don't have to think that much, and quite frankly, I think uh, that's one of the things that keeps people from from trying is the uh, prospect of having to uh, plan and and go about and make sure that everything is just so and you have it all worked out every detail is exactly so and most of all of these styles are not that way most of these styles are very like literally do it at home, uh, whether you have like a vanity maybe in your room or you have a, you know, a spot in the bathroom, hanging out in front of the bathroom mirror or whatever it might be, that you can just do it. You don't have to worry that you got the partings exactly perfect or you don't have to worry that you managed to have every single curl the exact same size. It's really more about just creating the wave so you have that bit of structure in your in your styling you have that bit of structure so you can build from it so it, it looks a little haphazard but that's okay for what we're going for this is perfectly fine now we're gonna try uh, I will say the back of this doll head does have longer hair at the nape but I think it will be okay for what we're doing. I can always tuck it in later if it turns out to be an issue. Stuff falling on the floor. Okay, let's see if I can let's see if I can do this so where people can kind of see what's going on. And since I don't need to be totally precise with it, I'm just kind of gonna take and 
scoot some of the hair out of the way. Uh, and clip it sort of here. And then we're going to come over to the other side and clip it just so stuff is not exactly all over the place. And I'm just going to start with this corner here. Did I make this super, super thick? I did. I don't want it that thick. So we'll just some more hair out of the way and that is a-okay if you're doing this by feel you can just kind of work it out and because this hair has dried out I am going to wet it back down the hair responds better when it is excessively damp so now we're gonna just try and secure a few few curls I'm hoping that and kind of see what I'm doing and then tuck it in uh, this doll head for some reason is missing a patch of hair right in the corner so we just have to work around that okay comb it so it's at least a uh, mildly smooth it doesn't have to be perfect just mildly smooth and then into Wrap it around the finger. Still doing the same basic uh, telescoping technique, just that the hair is a bit shorter than what I might be looking for uh, usually. All right, I'm gonna scoot around the other side. Scoot, 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 scoot. Here we go. And this one will have uh, probably one more curl over here, just for the sake of. Uh, it is it. Uh, for the sake that it is uh, not missing a chunk of hair in this corner. So, same thing. We're still. Kind of, oh, that doesn't want to do it, but that's okay. I'll just make it do it. Hold it. Hold it. I don't know if you can see what's going on over here, but the hair is being particularly stubborn. Yep, it doesn't want to. Hold on. Okay, approach it from a different angle. That is just being a piece of stuff, and I'm not happy with it. Of course. Get it, wrap it up. There, let me see if I can just slide the clip in. And... Nope. Fine. If that's what you want to do, that's what we're going to do. This may be slightly more wave than curl. That is okay. If this were on the, um, on, uh, Catherine Grayson's hair, these bottom ones wouldn't even be this long, so I'd really be struggling to get anything to stay. There we go. And then, I'll do it again. See, you can see even I screw up. Even I make a little, little mess of it every so often. That's okay. We're just gonna keep going. Not every time is the hair going to behave the way I want it to. Which can be mildly unfortunate, but you just gotta learn to work through it. Through it, work with it, do something. Okay, bring down that. And since we're on this side, we'll just kind of stay on this side. I'm gonna move the clippies so I can reach them instead of dragging all over the place. All right, same thing. Uh, as I've noted before, we are rolling towards the face. So every curl is at least 
aimed toward the face. Is it gonna stay? I don't know. But we're trying. Make it up as we go. Haphazard as it said. And these are about as haphazard as I'm willing to get. There's still like a little order in my chaos. You know, I'm still attempting to create nice, well-placed, well-sorted uh, pin curls. Is it working that way? I don't know. I mean, we'll find out next week when we comb it out if it actually worked out. But, uh, you know, at least we're getting somewhere with it. It's starting to come together. It's starting to look at least like I've put some effort in. And I'm just going to take this guy and turn it into a little curly. Does it really need to go this way? I don't know. But it is, because I just said it is. And since we're still, I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just keep working this side some fashion. See how, how well I can put all this together. Move out of the way. It's not going to. Fine. So, here we go. Yeah, it's going to be a pain in my butt. Because it's somewhat layered, somewhat blunt cut, somewhat broken. This is a very, very old doll head. Been around a while. This may be her retirement. So we need to look as fancy as possible. We're still combing to create smoothness, even if it's not behaving the way I want it to. Well, we're trying. Rolling all of them forward toward the face, because that's what, even though I said haphazard, that's what this uh, uh, publication says to do. So that's what I'm going to stick with. And make, you know, do my best to make a little magic happen. Since we're being a little haphazard about it, I think I'm going to let that other... A little piece there go to the other side. And then just a couple more, and then away we go, and then we'll do the other side, and when we're done. Then we'll have it all set so you can come back next week and catch the amazing finale of the comb out. Um, I've said before, this particular style is um, very, oh gosh, this is just, it's another curl that's turning into a disaster, a real disaster. There we go, kind of. Um, you know, if you were doing this with a curling iron, you just you know, randomly put curls in. Don't worry about them being any particular order or, uh, you know, I would just say, you know, try to keep them roughly the same size, but it doesn't have to be perfectly the same size. The idea here is for the wave, not for, um, the structure. Exactly. So, This one, I'm going to go ahead, comb it out, Let's make it our way through here, and then you might have noticed I just switched hands there to place that curl, because I think it'll, sometimes you just have to try and practice your ambidextrous moves, sometimes. Switch to that whatever hand feels like it's going to give you the the best uh, work for what you need. Which is why it's it's good to be at least modestly adept with both um, both right and left hands. And I'm just going to do this top one um, in slightly. 
uh, longer stem curls so we can I'm still gonna kind of work a lightly flatter crown not totally flat but lightly flatter um, makes it a little easier uh, will encourage the look of the wave and the fluff down low so we're just gonna pull those if you didn't want the flat crown then you could just take this um, section and split it into two more uh, rows so split it in half and just do little um, you know two uh, sets of the pin curls if you didn't want a little bit of a flat crown it's not a very flat crown because it's really not that much of the hair that's not getting um, curled and I'm turning my hand around and hoping that I can make make something make magic happen I'll only know when we comb it out how well I did I mean really truly I'll only know when we comb it out if I even succeeded in making any kind of a, a style since they never uh, show the back on these it really is even though they tell you what what you're aiming for they don't really ever tell you like oh well here they, you know they don't show you the back of anyone's head so it's really hard to say if I'm getting it quote unquote right if I'm at least maintaining the spirit of the style like in this case I'm gonna put another clip in here because I'm trying to hold that end alrighty and now last section coming back around see if we can do this thing we'll find out either will or won't roughly there ish or it doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to... Oh, I need a little more water here, too. There we go. And... See what we get. Worst that happens, do all this work, and it doesn't look right. And if that's the case, then she'll just have to live with a really awkward hair set. Possibly really awkward. Stay out of the way, hairs. Hmm, yeah, we'll do three here since we're able to. I hope people are seeing what's going on. Uh, I tried to set the camera in such a way as to sort of follow what I'm doing. Now, of course, it would be different if this were, um, if this were, uh, on your own head. You certainly couldn't see what the heck you were doing. Uh, but for these purposes, I can see what's going on. You see it's going right downhill, too. Now, this is fine. It just teaches you patience. You yeah. had a not absolutely lose it when the hair is not behaving. And then we'll continue another subsection. This one's going to have that little off curl there that we kind of set over to the side. Stay. And we'll just start on this little corner here and work our way over to the to the to the ear everything still being rolled forward even if it's being a pain in the rear end there we go so far so good uh you may notice as well with the haphazard curls comes haphazard pinning nothing is going to look quote unquote uh, pretty about this particular set aside from the fact that it is set. 
And that's going to have to be what we're going to call close enough. Yeah, and of course, here's a little guy that didn't want to join anybody's party. Where did it come from? Dang it. Crumbs. Bird seed crumbs. All right, here we go. Try again. Wrap it up. I don't like when that happens. I mean, at least I didn't do what I do with my own hair. Which is, if something doesn't go in when it's supposed to go in, you just rip it out. But that seems a bit much. There we go. Back to the topic at hand. Coming around. Wrapping as best we can. To, yep, to just have that happen. That's cool. It's my favorite. I love it. Just fight it. Tell it to behave force it into position, whatever it takes. Anyway, they're just haphazard. They're not meant to be perfect, and it's pretty clear they're not. Uh, but doing the best we can with what we got here. There we go. There we go. And last one for this row. I'm hoping we can kind of see what's going on and perhaps you can even see where I'm finding some some trouble. But doing the best I can. So, given that what we got going on, we'll just scooch all this out of the way and continue on. I do like the fact that there's no uh, particular order to this, aside from following uh, the direction of curls towards the face. I like that. That way I don't have to worry about having them exactly in such and such a place or having them exactly such and such uh, a size of uh, curl or exactly such and such a size of... Um, base or or anything so if they start getting weird you just pin them then there would be what they are I'm just letting it to uh, letting it happen I'm gonna call it letting it happen sort of naturally like I'm trying my best to work with the hair even if it's not necessarily working with me so I'm not entirely certain some of this may end up being a little um, like the ends may end up being a little straighter than uh, what I might like in a regular curl but you know I have to I have to work with what I have and what I have is some hair that has has had a good, good long run of it, and is is on its way to uh, retirement. And like I said before, on the other side, this top I'm choosing to make long stem curls. But if you wanted to get more uh, body and volume, you could opt to split this section in half and create uh, the same short stem curls that we have on the rest of the back of the head and uh, sides for that matter. Um, but that's really a uh, personal preference since this is well, once more, as I said on the other side, you don't ever really see the back of the head. And depending on when in the 1950s this particular style exactly came from, there might still be the tendency to have the um state um you might actually have the tendency towards that flat crown maybe somebody wants to still wear a hat they weren't quite as popular in the 50s but they might want to so so now i have to just grab and clip and hope for the best I'll split it in two. 
It'll be a little tiny curl, but it's okay. Come around here. As you can see, I'm not always, you know, I'm not always as successful in making these as I would like to be. I would love to think that all of my ends are perfect and that they don't ever stick out and they don't ever go stupid and ruin everything. But sometimes they do. Sometimes they just get stupid. Sometimes they stand out in weird ways and don't behave themselves. So, you know, we just gotta make make the best of it and just hope that for the most part it kind of works out Alrighty, there we have it done done and we're going to show a comparative put this here for a second so the top and past the part have the stand-up curls that i've used rollers to achieve this side shows you stand-up curls plus the rollers and then pin curls. But if you look here, there's really no curls there. Now that could have just been a stylistic choice in the drawing because they don't, they only show you the front, the top, and the side. So it's really hard to say if there really was any curls in the top. So we're just gonna, so we've done, here's the top, part is here, top is coming this way. And I just want to show how I staggered the sizes of the rollers so we don't end up having a split right down the middle. And then have these two coming down. And then every curl haphazardly is basically just curled towards the face. Um, and then we'll just uh, see what we get when she dries out. Oh, this poor thing is just so dead. She's a very old doll head, and I have overbleached, overcolored, overprocessed. Her hair is literally falling out. So this is probably the last time she gets used. So what a way to go out! But uh, to have a nice vintage set from the fifties. So with all of that said and done, I will be back next week at two o'clock to do the comb out and styling of this uh, particular set inspired by Katherine Grayson. And I look forward to seeing everybody next week.